Be aware of the ball machine behind you. Okay. Be aware of the ball machine behind you, Jay. Okay. Margaret, I'm just going to ask you to be aware of the ball machine behind you. Okay, when you're when you're stop hold one hold one sec. When you guys are doing the uh, the 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 angles, I want you in the center of your box. So you're going in front of her opposite me, and she's going in front of your opposite me. So it's a really narrow diagonal. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay, I want to remind I want to remind you guys that when the ball starts to get out of control, stop. Because otherwise we're practicing bad habits. We want to practice good habits, not bad habits. So control all the time. Okay? You're great, Margaret. It's awesome. Very nice, Angela. There you go, Rod. Ladies, very, very nicely done. I love your the way you're caressing the ball. It's beautiful. Oh. 
Okay, we're going to do volleys in one second. Just let, let them get a chance to finish up. Can you guys just stop for a second? Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same pattern now with volleying. So some things are going to change. For example, you're going to be taking more balls out of the air. But the principle of caressing the ball is going to remain. Yeah, I heard the, I heard I heard an instructor use that term on TikTok last night, and I thought it's a beautiful, beautiful way to less for less for Rod and I, more for the ladies. It's a it's a beautiful way to communicate how gently we're treating the ball. We are caressing the ball, so it's going to be firm but caressing. Okay. If we start to stab the ball, if we start to punch the ball, if we start to bang the ball, what happens? We lose control. Exactly right. So we need to caress the ball. So that means use the right amount of force. Any questions about what we're doing? Oh, with the black committee? I'm with Gray. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're Gray. And then and then and then the the highway crew stands over here. Good point. I like that. I like that. Right, okay, let's go back to our partners. Remember, same pattern. We're volleying, but remember, you're still caressing the ball. Maybe a little firmer than you were thinking, but you still want to. You still want to hit it with the right amount of pace. Are we in transition? No, nope. you're gonna stay. You're gonna stay right at the net, just nice and easy. This is uh, reaction volleys, nice and controlled. Good caressing, Rod. Look at the caressing. Well done. Very nice. If you're volleying above her head, she's going to have trouble returning it to you. So try to volley it right back into this zone. So your racket face is pointing up. It's going to go up, right? It's pointing at her. It'll go at her. Okay? Just a little softer, a little softer. Much better.
Good control, ladies. Good. Okay, everybody, come on in. Come on in. Margaret, I get a swear jar. I don't know why. Margaret gets a swear jar. Were you here when say sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Now. Let me let me explain. We're all we're all Canadian. We're all very polite. We all like to say sorry, and we feel bad if we're not giving our partner a good drill. But let me let me explain physically what happens. Okay, so there's a part of your brain called the hippocampus. When you make a mistake, your hippocampus immediately replays that like ten times, twenty times a second, very very quickly, unless it's interrupted. If you speak while it's trying to process, it'll move on to the next thing. So you will miss your opportunity to learn, for your hippocampus to, to learn, when you verbalize and say, oops, or sorry. I do it too, everybody or does shit. it. Or shit, or <laughs> worse. Yeah. Right. So we have this, we have this social desire to apologize to our friends, uh, and that's understandable. But in this group, we all understand that we're going to make mistakes and that the best way to deal with your mistakes is with silence. One of the, yeah, exactly. It gives your hippocampus a chance to continue learning from your mistakes, right? One of the reasons why I don't give you, like a lot of instructors are chattering at you all the time. I don't do that. I try, and especially if you're working through something, I try to be quiet and give your brain an opportunity to, your hippocampus an opportunity to process the hippocampus jar. <laughs> The higher up you go in my programs, the more silence you experience because you need silent practice for your hippocampus to efficiently process failure and turn it into success down the road. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, I know you have an urge to say sorry, but try and reduce it by 75% if you can. Yes? Watching your vagina, blood flow, just turn to the partner and go, Yeah. Yeah. And in a game, that's a different thing because in a game, you're not there to learn, you're there to compete. So it's yeah. different. In practice, we're expecting you to make mistakes. We're trying to put you to the edge of your abilities so that you're failing, so that you're learning from your failures. Right? You want to mix the failure and success, but you want to be, you want to fail and you want your hippocampus to learn from those failures. Okay, so don't feel the need to apologize. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, so so when as as lower level instructors, right, we're taught to constantly be chattering at our students. But the higher you go up in coaching and the more you work with professional coaches working with top, top athletes, the more that you see silence as the primary mode. Yes, you want to encourage, you want to give corrections and you want to give positive feedback, but you also need, there also needs to be a balance of quiet time so that the instructor, so that the student can process. Okay? So I don't want to turn this whole thing into a lecture on that, but uh, so we'll, we'll wrap that up. Um, okay, so we're going to be working on volleys today. Our format's going to be a little bit different. Normally we have a segment and then a break and then a second segment. What we're going to do today is we're going to have two courts going. 
Three people are going to start on one court. They're going to be doing high volleys. Three people are going to start on the other court. They're going to be doing low volleys. Then we're going to come to a halfway point. Then we're going to switch. Yes? Yeah, I'm going to demonstrate that. I'll explain all that. So, But that's what we're going to be doing today. So there will be a water break. When you come back, you'll be switching courts. So you'll be working with the same three partners all day. We are going to have some contests, uh, just uh, like some, some numbers games like we usually do. Uh, but they're going to be individualized to the two courts. We're not going to all come together in one big team. So I'm going to get everybody. To, I, get, I have to do all my demonstrations all at once, which means I'll have to repeat them again later. I'll get everybody over here in what I call the penalty box. Okay, before you turn it on, I need to explain a couple of things. Uh, the angle that we're, we're hitting these balls at. A high volley, we want to get over the ball and hit down on it, right? A low volley, we want to get under the ball and hit up on it. So your paddle face needs to be facing down on the high balls and up on the low balls. Now this is a little bit tricky, okay? On the high balls, if my hand is, okay, first of all, if my, I'm going to use my hand as, a, as an example and my shoulder. If my shoulder is out to the side and I'm trying to hit down or out here, it, this can be really difficult, right? This is a really weak position for your arm to be in, to be straight out to the side. So you want it in a stronger position, which is about 45 degrees. It's not straight ahead. It's not straight to the side. It's not quite 45 degrees, but it's, it's at an angle uh, kind of like this, okay? There's that. Then the other thing is your palm needs to be down. So if you're taking the ball too far back, what happens? It goes up in the air, right? But if you reach out for it, right, you're going to be able to get it going down, okay? Now the good news is gravity is working with you here. You're hitting a ball down. You don't have to hit it very hard. You just need to deflect it down. It'll come off your racket. The angle will direct it downwards, and gravity will do the rest. So I don't want to see anybody swinging. We're not pounding balls today. We're just getting our, our arm out at an angle, our paddle face down. We're taking it out in front of us. See how far out in front of this this is for me to hit down? So we're taking it out here and not back here, and we're just directing it down. Okay? I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute, but first of all, I want to explain hitting up on a ball now. Now, if we're reaching out on a ball, if we're so when we're hitting down, our contact point is way out here because we want to get it down. And this is the best place to biomechanically for, for our arm to hit the ball down. But if we do that same thing with an understroke, with, a, with an upward volley, what happens? Our arm is fully extended when we're reaching out into weakness, right? So this elbow doesn't need to be out here like it is on the down volleys. It needs to be closer to our body, right? I like to think of upward volleys as T-Rex arms because I like to keep my elbows right close to my body, right? Like a T-Rex, right? Um, so paddle face up, keep your elbows in, think of yourself as a squatting T-Rex. Yes? No, we're just doing that. We're, today we're doing this, yeah. So your most, there's two vol kinds of volleys you're going to typically get at the net. You're most often, either volleys you can hit down on or volleys you have to hit up on. In between are the attacking volleys. We'll get to those in another lesson. Today we're just going to do our uh, these two high and low volleys. All right. So any questions about? There's a lot of explanation there. I'm going to come around while the machines are running and give you individual tips. So I'll, I'll support this with more information later. That's kind of the overview. So we're going to do one demonstration on this machine. Then we're going to go down to the other end and do a quick demonstration on the other machine. Okay, you can fire that up. There is a danger with the ball machine of walking in front of it and getting hit by a ball. Um, please don't make that happen today. Do not stand in front of the machine until it's off. Even if you're on the other side of the net, right? So, all right. Can you turn on, please? Awesome. Yeah, just the top switch. All right, so I'm going to stand to one side of the line. My, I'm going to stand to, to the side with my dominant hand closest to the center line. I can take a bite. Here we go. So I want you to watch how I'm not swinging very hard. I don't have to swing very hard at all. 
What I don't want to see is this. But that's what happened, right? So we don't need to swing. Just get a paddle in front of it and direct it down. That's all you need to do, right? If you want to direct it to that side, turn your paddle face this way. If you want to direct it to the other side, turn your, oops, sorry, Rod. The ball machine is not the only dangerous thing here. Okay, so now I'm turning my paddle face out, right? So that's all you have to do. I'm not taking a big swing at this. We don't want any swing volleys because that's what happens. You can shut it off. Last one. Okay. Awesome. Question. Yep. I'm just pointing my paddle face towards that sideline. Yeah. Yeah, just turn your paddle face. You, you can adjust your body for sure, in addition. Whatever it takes. So adjusting your paddle face doesn't mean you only move at the wrist, right? Adjusting your paddle face can mean you're going to shift your, your body's angle to adjust your paddle face. It's not just a wrist turn, right? Whatever you have to do to adjust, you know, relative to where the ball is coming at you from, right? Sometimes it'll be enough just to turn your wrist. Sometimes you might have to lean back a little, yeah, but you want to get your paddle face pointing towards you, where you want the ball to go. Uh, well, you could, that's a backhand. I was just hitting forehand, right? Yeah. You can hit backhands or forehands for volley. I was just demonstrating forehands. That's what we're going to work on today, right? So, Margaret, because you're left-handed, you're going to stand on the right side of the line, and Ann. And everybody else is going to stand on the left side of the line when you're on this court. Okay. Yeah, I said Anne and Margaret. Okay. We're all going to move down to the other penalty box now, and we're going to do the other demonstration. Angela, can you throw those in the in the machine and then come down to the other machine? No, put the balls in the machine and then come to this machine. Okay, everybody, end of the penalty box on the other side here, please. Okay, penalty box over here, please. We're burning time. Angela, can you turn on the machine, please, to feed? All right, so now I need to get under the ball, right? On the other side, I had to get over the ball. Now I have to get under the ball. Give this machine a second. These balls are firing a lot lower. And I want my T-Rex arms, right? So I'm keeping my elbows close to my body, right? Right? So just see how I'm getting, and again, I'm not, I'm not really swinging, am I? I'm just blocking, caressing the ball. Everybody see that? So watch me, not the ball. Watch me, not the ball, right? So see how I'm not getting my arms way out in front of me? I'm keeping my elbows close. All right, you can shut that off. Any questions about what I just did? All right, all right. So we'll start with these three: Anne, Margaret, and Rod at this machine. Aisha, Angela, and Gay at the other machine, please. I'm going to give you individual things that I want you to work on as I come around and talk to you individually. Okay, yeah, good point. The cycle. Ah. Uh, I want you to hit three balls and then move. Okay? So if when you come off, the first thing you do is go grab the tube and start picking up balls. Actually, we'll do five. Five. Five and then switch. So Anne will do five. You're going to be standing ready to come in. She's going to say next ball, and you're going to stay off the court until she says go. And then you're going to she's going to say next ball to warn you. And she's going to hit her last ball, then you're going to sub in. At that point, Margaret will put that or just stand the tube up wherever you are, and I'll come around and grab the tube. When the tube's full, dump it in the machine. Same process will apply to the three of you. Are you want to start at the net? Okay. Let's do that. You want to stand, you want to start on deck? 
Okay, we'll do that. You're going to start with the tube. Uh, there's not really a tube for the first ball. All right, I'm turning this machine on. Don't worry about it. One more. Okay, exit out this side, Rod. One more. Okay, there we go. Exit out this side. Margaret, come on in. Okay. It's going too fast. The feet's too fast. All right. Clear your feet. No, no, the ball's out of your feet. Yeah, just clear the ball out of your feet. There we go. All right, here we go. We're going to get started again. Here it comes. I turn the machine just a little bit. Okay, you want to be right on the tee, right on the tee for that one. Not right on the tee. There you go. Ah, good job, Margaret. All right. So when you go up, I want you to get the ball right in your V. All right. So if you have to move to one side or the other, get it in your V first. So turn your racket, get it in your V, and then do your block. Okay. Nice, Margaret. T Rex arms. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Come out this side, Margaret. Out this side. Always come out this side. Next time. Uh, it depends on if she's right-handed. Yeah, should be. So it, I should just leave it centered. I'll move the machine. People are instinctively going to go centered. Nice, Gay. Okay. On the way, your task. I want you to be really. I want you to really center the ball, and really be really gentle with it. Center and gentle. Center and gentle. Correct. Press the ball. Okay. Yeah, a little firmer maybe. Good job. A caress has some, some pressure to it. Right? There we go. That was beautiful. Nice. I like that. Your challenge is the balls are really high on you, so you're reaching up into weakness. So I want you to think about getting up on your toes to get above the ball. Like, get as much height as you can. Nice, huh? Ah, that was really nice, Aisha. It's on. It's okay. I'll check it. Good. So it's exactly the right amount of pressure to be hitting the ball with, okay? Should the grip be tight or soft? Individual preference. I tend to hold it loose until the moment of contact. I firm up. So as hard as you're squeezing the paddle, that's how hard you want to hit the ball. So if you think of it as a caress, then your hand should have the right amount of power. Yep. No, oh, we're good. So, I want you to think about, it's not just arms, right? You need to move into a stronger position too. So you can't just reach, be stationary and just reach out with your arms. 
Sometimes you got to move your body a little bit just to be in that strong position. You can't move forward because of the kitchen, though, right? No, you can't move forward because of the kitchen, but it's not just always just with your arms. Sometimes you got to move your body a little bit just to get it more under control, if that makes sense. Okay, so think about that. I don't want you glued to the floor. A little less swing, gay. Okay? We're not, we're not swinging at these. Just give them a little, there we go. Just give them a little love tap. Beautiful. Nicely done. You got it, gay. Really nice, Margaret. Don't need to swing so much. That's better. Just give him a little bump, a little love tap. There we go. Good job. Good job. Okay, I want you to think about this. We don't want to reach if we can avoid it. Sometimes we have no other choice. But if we have a choice, we want to get our core of our body as close to the ball as we can so that we're not reaching because we're always stronger with the T-Rex arms than we are with fully extended arms. Right, so step out into the path of the ball or as close as you can so that you can get the T-Rex and get a nice firm racket on, okay? I love the way you were hitting the balls though, they were great. Nice, Ann. I love the way you're adjusting your body, Ann, it's great. Oh, hi, look at that. Keep your feet on the ground, Rod. Ah, one more, and then come out this side. All right, come with me for a second. I want you to think about it as a, as a net, a fishing net, right? I want the fish to jump right into the net. Right, because right now you're waiting for the ball, the ball's coming, 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 and you're, you're coming up from underneath it and bumping it. I'd rather see you get your paddle up, right, and have the fish fall right into the net. Exactly. Exactly. You got it. <clears throat> Margaret, that's nice. I love the way you're moving your body. That was a tough one. Good. You gotta warn Ann. You gotta warn Ann before you sub out. Warn her the next one. Rod, you're up next. Ooh. We stuck? No, oh, there it is. Okay. Less swing, gay. Less swing, more block. Good. All right. So, see the uh, kitchen here, and see where the the, the oh, tape right. line is. I want you to put some past the tape and some in the kitchen now. Okay. So start varying your your depth. Okay, some in the kitchen, some past the tape. Nice. Good job. That was really nice. Yeah, good. Okay, put some in the kitchen, some past the tape. See the tape back there? Some in the kitchen, some past the tape. Good. Uh, just FYI for the other group, yeah. it's way easier just to pick up five and then yeah. move on. Because yeah, it's going to so fast, it's just gets in the way. Yeah, you can slow it down if you want. Good job. Nice. So those three that you flubbed were all down around your heel here. So, okay. It'll come with experience. Don't worry about it. You were getting rackets on them. That's the first step. 
Hey, Ann, some in the kitchen, some past the tape now, okay? Some in the kitchen, some in past the tape. See the tape on the court? Ah, good job. Warren Rod. There you go. All right. So we want to start alternating between the kitchen and beyond the tape. Okay. Nice rod in the kitchen, buddy. That's better. You're 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 catching the fish now. There you go. Oh, that one you reached for. There we go. Nice. Oh, I'm going that was sweet. Yeah. I like the way you're moving your body now. Yeah. So some in the kitchen, some some in the kitchen, some past the tape. Alright, Rod? Rod? So there's tape here. Right, so I want some in the kitchen, some past the tape for your next round, okay? Okay, we're going to do one more round and shut off the machine. All right, when you get around to Aisha, shut it off. Okay. Good job. Okay, when we get around to when you're done your turn next, we're going to stop and we're going to take a water break, okay? When your turn ends. Okay. Some in the kitchen, some beyond the tape, man. That's beautiful. Look at that one. Oh. Oh, nice, Angela. Uh oh. Caress, don't punch. There we go. Caress, beautiful. Uh oh. That was a spank, not a caress. <laughs> Okay, so off. Nicely done, Rod. All right. All right, don't punch. Caress, caress, caress. There we are. Caress. There we go. There we go. Last one, Margaret. Shut it off. Shut it off. Yep. Pick up and drink. Oh, that's great. Okay, great. You know how much work that is. I know. Know everybody. Yeah, she is. She's like, hey, yeah. she to all these like little, yep. little pit balls, which of all different. Oh, and Alan and Brett are going to play on Thursday. Awesome. I know. I'm just so All right.
All right, it's a drink, not a meeting. It's a drink, not a meeting. No meeting, meeting's over. All right, so you're gonna switch sides now. <coughs> yeah, you're on this side now, Margaret. All right, so remember, there's the kitchen and there's beyond the tape. Between those two zones is something we call the black hole. I don't want you to put any balls in the black hole, right? I'm gonna give you five minutes to get used to hitting balls beyond the tape and in the kitchen. And then, every time you hit one in the black hole, you're going to move out automatically. Oh. So as long as you keep hitting balls in the kitchen and to the, to the, past the tape, you can stay in. But as soon as you hit one in the black hole, you've got to go out the side. You've got you to earn your ball machine time. Did you guys hear that? Okay, so we've got the kitchen, and we've got the tape to the baseline. Everything between the kitchen and the tape is the black hole, right? I don't want you hitting any balls into the black hole. So we're just going to start with practicing that, and then we're going to turn into a little, well, consequences if you put it in the black hole. So no, yeah, we'll just start off doing five each again. But once we get into once we get into game time, we're going to see who has the longest streak without hitting one into the black hole. Okay? Now you have to go faster, right? Because it has to go faster. That means you have to go quickly to get into the place. Okay, right? All right. Okay, so I just want to reiterate, between the blue line and the tape is the black hole. You're, right now you're practicing to stay out of the black hole. In a few minutes, about five minutes, we're, we're going to play a game to see who has the longest streak of staying out of the black hole. Okay, so right now it's just practice. Go ahead, turn on the machine. Now for you, they're going to be like volleys, regular volleys. Well, you're practicing right now. Practicing for it. Uh, yeah. Good. That's great. How is it? So, the key to yeah. controlling the ball is that combination of keeping it in your funnel, yeah. right, and caressing the ball. The minute you start to smack it, you lose control. Okay? So just hone in on it. It'll come. Just keep working on it. I know. Takes a minute. You're going to hit four or five before you move because we're not playing the game yet. Okay? We're not playing the game yet. We're just practicing. So you're going to hit four or five and then you're going to, you're going to switch. We'll say five. There we go. You're doing great. Just relax a little. Just relax a little. You're really tense. You're doing great. Right? Just relax a little. You'll have more success if you just relax a little because you've got this skill, okay? 
not the first time I've been hit by a ball. Exactly. Now remember, get above the ball rod. Above. You want to get above the ball, right? You don't want to be coming up at it like a shark. You want to be above it, right? So, here, let's step over here. So as the ball's coming to you, you want to get your paddle higher than the ball so you can deflect it down. You don't want to be stabbing at it, coming at it like a great white. You want to be above it and then just bump it down, okay? Okay, so you're... So you're, you're coming under the ball. You need to get above the ball so that you can just deflect it down, right? So whatever angle is coming at you, make sure you get above the ball before it gets there, okay? Get above the ball, Margaret. Get above it. Okay. That's better. That ah, was great, Margaret. You were above it. That ah, was good, Margaret. Okay, get above the ball, Rod. Above it. Nope, that was below. Get above it. Oh. Right, I'm going to swap out. Just step to the left, and then we're going to do that. Watch me. I'm getting above the ball, right? So my racket, as soon as the ball comes out, my racket goes up and gets above the ball, where it's gonna where it's gonna be. Right? You you're coming. You're doing this. Watch. You're doing. Right. You're doing this. You're coming at it from below. So get above it. Yeah, it's okay. Get above it. I was above it. That was a tough one to get above, but you did it. That's better. Good job. Much better. See the difference? Yeah. Get above the ball. Yeah. You got to get above it, Ann. Reach up high. That's better. Yeah. Don't get above it, but don't swing at it. Just push it. Give it a little bump. Love tap. Love tap, get above it and love tap it. <laughs> You'll get it. Okay. That was a rough one. So, uh, and so the key is as soon as the ball comes out of the machine, don't pull your paddle back, get it up. Right? Because if it's too high, you can always get it down. But if it's too low, you end up pushing. Exactly. So get high. Nice, Kay. We're good. Switch. Less talky, more switchy. Oh, nice. Okay, with you we're going to start our contest. So as long as you hit one in the... Go yo, ahead. Yo. Yep. Okay, so our contest is on here. So, oh, you're out, you're out. That's okay, you're out. So you're, you're at zero. Oh, mine is zero. Come on, gay. Don't. Yeah. Okay. Right. 
I'm going to slow down the machine. One. Oh, one. Oh, switch. All right, let's start our personal streak. It's coming. So. And can you pause the machine for a second? Okay, we're going to start our personal streaks now. So. If you're standing here and you hit one in the kitchen, that's one. You hit one, some like, like as long as it's not in the black hole, you're going to score a point. As soon as you hit one in the black hole, your turn is over and you're out. So if your streak was one, that's your streak. If your streak was three, that's your streak. We want to see who has the best streak at the end of this. Okay, go ahead and turn it back on, Ann. Turn it back on. There you are. Go ahead. Or just pop up there. Don't worry about the balls. We'll get them later. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, oh. Five, yeah. One. Ah, uh, switch out, switch out, switch out. Yeah. As soon as your streak is over, you switch out. Oh, we're at one. That's one. Oh, you're out. Hands in. Rod streak is one. Oh, hands out. Margaret, get ready to switch back in. Don't worry about the balls, guys. Okay, you're out, Margaret. Don't worry about the balls. We'll get them at the end. Three. Rod's got a streak of three going. Streak of three for Rod. Oh, switch out. What's the longest streak over here? One. Yeah, that's awesome. Ah, oh, you switch out. Out. At one time? At one, at one time? I don't know. Can we take five off? No, no. You can do as many. You stay there until your, your streak is over. Oh, you missed. Okay, I know you're in. One. Two. Oh, streak of two. We got a streak of two, though. Two. Three. Four. Four. I know his streak ends at four.
Oh, nice try. Oh, missed it. Who has the longest streak so far? Three? All right. Oh, no, switch. Oh, switch. 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 Let's try. Ah, just out. One. Oh, a little much. One. I'm I'm watching the time. Hey. One more turn each, and then we're done. Nice. One more turn each, and then we got to put everything away. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Are you okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll come and talk to you. Ah, okay. Let's get everything put away and then we'll have a quick little meeting. That fit. Good work. All right. And we're going to put that right, lean it right against this table right here, please. I'll get a ball caught. Be careful. Caught? Comes up. Really hey, just pull it out the wheel. Put your hand. Right. Yeah. You right. There you got it. You got it. Nope, this one inside one's first. I know. It's just because you're good at <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, let's have a little meeting. Grab, where's Aisha? We'll grab everybody. We'll have a little discussion before we go. All right, come on in. Let's have a little chat. You want to grab Rod? Rod, quickly. We've got one more minute. One more minute.
put it in the hallway and then come on back in. Are we going to play for one minute? No. We're going to have a chat. All right, so today we worked on volleys. We worked on low volleys. We worked on high volleys. With high volleys, we want to get the ball, we want to get above the ball. We want to get our racket out in front of it. Uh, a little tap, just a little caressing tap downward, right, into the court. People think that when the volley's up high, they need to hit a winner every time. That's not your objective. Your objective is to force your opponent to hit a ground stroke, preferably from outside of the court somewhere. So you want to deflect it out the sidelines, out the back line, or if they're deep, you want to just drop something in the front court, forces them to move up and hit a ground stroke. Okay, you're not always going for winners on those overhead volleys. Okay, uh, low shots, T-Rex arms, keep our, our elbows close, get our clo core close to the ball, and just bump it up over the net. Okay, yep. any questions about what we did today? Everybody, yeah, everybody did awesome. All right, you guys are great. Thank you very much.